Hello and welcome to Blender Let's Play. I am Sean. This is once again not Blender, this is Godot. I'm gonna start a series called Godot Let's Play because I'm doing a lot of these. So yeah. So what are we here for? Well, so in Godot, I want to have a background that follows my player. That's what I wanted. Um, I thought it'd be cool if I had a parallax effect. I kind of had a space theme going on. And so we have some planets and some stars, and they're going to be parallaxing against each other. When I was looking at tutorials and stuff for the best practices for scrolling backgrounds, I found that there were two method. There were like three methods that are done. One is the parallax. Two is the um, adjusting the UV of the image itself, and then three is or setting the position of a bunch of sprites manually with code, and I didn't like those latter two, so I thought I would spread the information that Parallax is a good way to do this, a very good way to do this. So, and so with that, let's jump into it. We have our, I'm just gonna name this main. So we have our main scene with a Parallax background and POS position. This is a camera. So this is our camera. This camera just has a way of moving, allowing us to move around it. So we can just move the camera around by going left to right with our arrow keys. Like that, voila. Cool. So now our parallax background scene, what it ha has is it has two parallax layers. We really only need to worry about one right now though. So I'm just gonna hide that one. So what we have is we have a parallax background, we have a parallax layer, and we have a sprite. Now, important thing about the sprite is I have set centered off, and I have placed its texture on there. And its texture is 1920 by 1920. Yeah, so if we go to the parallax layer, now we set mirroring to 1920 and 1920. And what that does is that sets the position at which it will create a new image for you. So it will just create a new image to the side for you and remove the images behind for you automatically. And so that's like literally all you need to do to have a scrolling background. Literally everything. And if we go back to our main scene and we hit play, as you can see, we have a background that follows our player and it is completely infinite. There is no end to it. You can go as far as you want. Your level can be as large as you want and your background will never disappear, basically. And if you just have a 2D, if you don't, if you just have a world that has a finite height to it or a finite width to it, no problem. Just set the mirroring on one axis rather than two, or just have your camera move in that axis. So if you have a camera, you literally need zero code, well, other than to move the camera for your, to make your background work. Just some parallax nodes and it's bright. Cool. So now what if you don't want to have a camera? Well, that's cool because you can figure that out too. So we're just going to remove this camera position node delete. Boom. Bye bye camera pause. And so now we're going to go to our script on our main scene. And all we're going to do is we're going to uncomment this out and I'll explain what it's doing. So we have a speed, we have a rotation speed, we have a direction and we have a parallax background. This is just referencing our parallax background. It's pretty obvious. And I have a line commented out here, which is rotating our direction. So our direction is a vector two. That is basically just representing an arrow pointed in a certain direction away from zero. And so the total value or the total distance from zero to this point here in space is going to be one, basically. And it's basically like the vector two equivalent of one, just in a certain direction. And then we're multiplying that direction times the speed, and the speed is 1000. And we're multiplying that speed by delta so that it will be the same on anyone's monitor, no matter what the refresh rate is or their frame rate for their game is running at. Cool, so now what is this doing? We don't have a camera in the scene, no camera here, just the parallax background and the main scene. If we hit play, as you can see, we are just infinitely scrolling upwards. Voila. Throw a title on there and a play button and yeah, you have yourself a title screen. Ta-da! Amazing! Cool. 
So now the benefit of this is if you want to, you can do something more fun and advanced, like you can make it go in circles. So all we're doing here is we're taking the direction, we're assigning it the direction rotated, rotation speed times delta. Now our rotation speed is going to be, um, it's radians, and you can convert the degrees to radians, that would make this your life a bit simpler here, but I'm just throwing it as straight radians because I don't really care, and I've done the math enough to know about how radians work. Six is almost 100, blah, blah. Anyway, so now what happens is we go in circles. We, so instead of going in a straight line, our direction changes over time, and we go in a circle. Yay. You could even throw different ty types of math stuff in there. You could use a curve property or a curve resource to get you a um, different effects, different camera movements. Now, do you really need it to go in circles? Probably not. You probably just need to go a straight line. But nonetheless, I thought that was cool. So yeah, literally like less than 10 lines of code. 13 lines of code, technically, maybe 12 lines of code. Anyway, yeah. It's really simple. So you don't need to be doing stuff with UVs. You don't need to be doing stuff by manually setting the position of sprites. You can just use the parallax, and it does everything you need to, even if you don't use a parallax. And if you do want to use a parallax, all you have to do is set a new layer and set the scale to something smaller or larger than one. And now if we hit play, you can see that our stars are moving slower than our planets. And it gives a cool effect. And you can have as many layers of these as you want. You could have a forest in the background. Next to that, you can have some mountains, or maybe the mountains are in the forest, and then, then some brush, and then a road maybe that your player walks on, and then in front of that, you can even have some trees that you pass by. It's foreground elements. So yeah, that's the parallax nodes background and how to do scrolling backgrounds effectively in Godot. Thank you for watching, and you're welcome. <laughs> and I will leave you on infinite scrolling background. Whee!